Hello, everyone. I'm Jay Sayers, um, host of uh, our FileMaker STL meetup. And this is our September 2022 meetup. Presenter, Valentin Volver, lead developer at Skeleton Key. He's going to show us what he does uh, with API integrations. He thinks that FileMaker and API integrations are a powerhouse. And it's got some tips that he's going to share. I'm going to let you finish off that introduction there, Valentin, and appreciate you being here. Cool. Thank you, Jay. That sounded like an introduction of somebody to a dating show or something. He thinks that it's a powerhouse. But... <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah, let me um, share my screen. We'll see if I pick the right one. I think I did. All right, cool. So yes, troubleshooting API calls. Um, this is by no means do I claim this is the ultimate guide. It's a collection of steps and tools that I use um, over quite some time now and um, that have really worked for me. So I just wanted to sort of share this. Um, and I think, um, I hope there's something in here for everybody. Um, I think it's going to go from a few basic things to um, some less known things. Um, and in the end, I'm going to start out with troubleshooting steps. And I hope that in the end, I can show you something that hopefully you won't have to troubleshoot all that much anymore. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. At any point, stop me if you have any questions, if you want to elaborate on something, if you have thoughts or your own experience with uh, something that I'm uh, talking about, then um, I think that'd be great. I'm also going to try to make sure we have enough time in the end. All right, I am going to send you guys a link to a quick little poll. And um, you can either click that link or point your phone at this um, barcode here. Um, and I'm going to start it up now with a few questions um, and just answer them. And hopefully we're going to get them live results here on the screen. All right. Very even distribution there. That is cool and very fast, it seems. Yeah, nice. I like it. All right, cool. Um, oh, we still have some, uh, I think we're good now. Excellent. Thank you. And let's go to the next one. Have you used Postman before? All right. That is 10 out of 10 have used it. Okay, great. Then I don't need to go into detail there. That's awesome. And then last but not least, have you used generator? And number three is a perfectly valid uh, response. All right, also good mix. Nice. All right, so I think um, we have a good mix of um, experience and people here for, for this. So let's dive in. Today, um, I think there's like three, three main areas and I obfuscated them a little bit in this slide. Like um, to me, setting up API calls is all about eliminating variables because if you have too many variables when you're trying to place an API call, then you're going to run into a problem, but you have a hard time finding what that problem is. So um, I think it's been almost, it's been over a year since I presented on APIs last year. Um, and this is a little bit of a continuation if you remember anything from that meetup, then you might uh, see things that are familiar to you, but still like there's a sequence of steps that I think really works. Um, if something doesn't work, it's all about finding out what am I actually doing it? Like what's part of my call? How is it constructed? What am I getting back from the API? The few steps that I want to show that help get that information. And then sometimes the biggest question is like, what am I actually sending? What is the, the API on the other end? What are they receiving from me? And um, I found a really useful tool to, to dig into that a little bit. So I'm going to go through that. That was our call. So the first step in eliminating variables is really, is twofold for me. And that has proven to be right 
time after time after time. If you try to implement an innovation between FileMaker and an API, don't start in FileMaker. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. So these two steps, don't use FileMaker and find the easiest call possible. Um, and in this meetup, I'm gonna go through, gonna use uh, MailChimp just because it's a pretty popular API and it's very well documented. So now I'm gonna get out of this uh, presentation a little bit and into the more interesting demo. A little bit out of scope for this um, meetup to talk about the different ways we authenticate against APIs because that can be in and of itself pretty intense. If you have ever integrated with like AWS or something, then you know that's like the biggest hurdle. So I'm gonna just use this API because it uses fairly basic authentication um, and then go over that if we have time in the end and there's specific questions. Maybe we can go into authentication, but it's not really the biggest part, even though that often makes up a big part of finding out what, how to integrate with that API. So I'm gonna bring this over here. If you have used, everybody has used Postman. So um, this is um, familiar then. So the first step really is for me is let me find the absolutely most basic call, which always is a get call. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to pass any parameters. I don't want to pass anybody. I don't want to have anything else to worry about. I just want to have that most basic call. Give me some information back so I know that I have the right domain. In this case, for example, I need to find out the subdomain, that I know my token works, that I have it all put uh, together just right. So when I translate this here from the documentation, there are only two pieces of information. I have my, my URL, which I paste up here. And then I have my basic authentication, which Postman is nice, gives me that tab. I say, okay, I can have a bearer token. I select that from my drop down here somewhere. And then I paste my token in, which by the way, is not gonna be valid if you watch the recording. Um, and then I hit send. And that is the most basic integration and I get a response. I have my code 200 here, a little bit of additional information. I got a cookie back, I'm not gonna worry about that. But I have my basic first call and I always find the first call is the most important. So really, if, you're, if we take this example, so I say, I wanna create a campaign in MailChimp and add 500 um, um, recipients to it right away. That is not where you start. You really go through some effort, find the most basic call available that has the least options. And maybe even because that documentation is bad and you don't even know how to properly structure the body that you're gonna send. So you don't wanna be hung up there. You wanna find something really easy where you just ask for information, you get something back to validate your token, your general approach. Um, and some basics and keep it out of FileMaker. All right, once that is done, now I'm gonna um, jump a little bit to FileMaker because what we're sending here is we can look at in um, Postman here in various forms for us the most common or what we use in FileMaker is the curl encoding, right? Um, it is sending a cookie here, which we can ignore. So this is the most basic call. That's the information we're trying to send. So in a way, it's almost, that's what we need to put in the curl options um, in our FileMaker file. So, and where's my FileMaker file? I'm gonna bring this over here. And I have a copy of this file available that I think I can share after this meeting. And at some point, it's going to have an amazing introduction here. Not yet. And in the first step here, this is my script, very basic. I have my URL. I set my curl options to get, and then I try to authenticate here. And um, just for clarity purposes, 
I put my authentication token in a custom function, not because I think that is a safe place to store such a thing. I actually think it's incredibly unsafe because then it's in every DDR you ever run. So don't store your API key in a custom function, um, but just simply because I use it in a lot of steps, uh, scripts, and it's easy to change this way. Um, that might be an interesting meetup. How do we store API keys? Um, but out of scope. Anyway, so I'm gonna run this now and it fails. And I get um, no information because I have no record here. So let me do this again. Um, I have a little bit of information. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that hopefully you can see a bit more on the screen. There we go. API key invalid. So before I go to the debugger, I wanna use this as an opportunity to show you a few more things because one of the things I said in the beginning is I wanna know as much as possible of like what I'm actually sending, what I'm actually getting back. So here in this first option, I'm really keeping it to the bare minimum. So there's another thing you can add to your uh, response because in Postman, for example, and in most other places, we get additional information, right? We get this code, we get some uh, some headers back here that gives us a, a lot of information at times um, that's coming back from the server that's independent. So we can actually get that same information when you add in your curl options, just this line, a slide, uh, was it a dash D, and then you can send it to any variable that you want. And I'll, I'll show you a demo in, or how that looks in the script in a second. So when I, when I uh, create a new record, place my call, it fails again. I still have my response body, but I have a little bit more information. Okay, so unauthorized. Okay, that, that makes sense because here it says API keys and valid. Right, but if, if there was a different message, I would get additional information here. So right now, doesn't help me quite yet, um, but I see a little bit more. And let me find the script space again. What this used was just simply, in my curl options, I added this little option D and then whatever I want to call this variable. In my case, I just call it response headers. That just tells FileMaker, dump all the headers you receive back from the API into this variable. And it can help us have more information about the server, whether we're getting anything back, or maybe if it's a server error, we get additional information there. So it's just um, um, helpful at times. All right, well, that's great. There's something else we can use. And that is actually, we can get a full curl trace. And that has been extremely valuable for me at times. And that is by adding the dash trace. And then again, you can send it to any variable. So let me place that call, still fails. And here, now you get a lot of information. So I just wanna open this up real quick. This is how my curl options look now. I have my get, I have my authorization header here. And then I just add these two curl options that I mentioned, the dash D and the dash trace. That gives you a lot of additional information that you can log either in variables or send to a log table. Be careful because there might be things like API keys in there. The curl trace here, Almost the most important thing is scroll down to the to the end and see um, if it says like yeah everything's good close to connection we're uh, we're happy here. The curl trace is probably the most helpful when you're working with um, any kind of firewall. Whether you're hitting a server that is behind a firewall because you're connecting to an API that is hosted on an internal network, for example. And that's definitely something I've uh, run into. Um, Stu and I had the great fun um, a little while ago to integrate a FileMaker file to an internal system 
both of which were behind a firewall and we never had access to it. So we had to make our changes and send them a file. They had to try it out and send us back the information. So having these detailed trace options really helped us. And we managed to integrate, like we got a positive connection to a system, a connection between two machines that we had absolutely zero access to. We had great people on the other side of the firewall that helped, it was a really good collaboration but without this level of tracking and tracing and logging, um, I don't think it would have been possible. The other place where this can become really helpful, the curl trace, um, when you look through it, you see a lot of SSL um, back and forth here, is if there's any kind of security um, certificate issue, for example, whether that's your client, whether that's the server, and most often you just scroll through it, there's a lot of noise, um, but if something goes wrong, it's gonna be pretty visible that it complains like, hey, this didn't work, closing connection. So this is really um, sort of something to have in your back pocket a little bit. It's not something that's gonna be useful for every um, integration you ever work on, but um, it's definitely saved my uh, work a few times. So let me just look at my script here and the next steps. All right, so now we have the, these curl options, it still fails, right? Like we're sending the call, you know, let me do this again, it still says doesn't work. So really we wanna try out why is that not, or find out why that is not working. So I can look what I send and one thing that I'm, uh, is most useful here is I have placed a successful call right here with Postman. So when I hit send here, I get stuff back. So something is different. And that's where it's helpful because Postman is actually doing a lot of stuff for us and it's configuring that call. So now this little code symbol here is really helpful. And I said before, like really this is the only thing that really matters to us. So that's the authorization header. I keep that open in the background. I look at my curl options and I look at my authorization header. We can see the difference, right? Like I just forgot to put the bearer in. I just pasted the API key, didn't put a bearer in there. So let me just go in and fix that. Let me see, I think that was option three. Um, So I'm gonna do this. I just put in a bearer and a space and that should fix it because then I think it should pretty much the same as what we saw in Postman. So let's give that a, a whirl. And here's our call. Now I got back some basic information from MailChimp it almost doesn't matter at this point. I got my 200 okay call. So right over here, I see that there's no error. Everything's good. We're good to go. So that's part of why I try to use Postman. Um, and I continue to use it also for subsequent calls because it does a lot for us. One of the things it does, it automatically generates headers, for example, that um, some APIs might need. So I want to find out. If my call in FileMaker is not working, then I can go back and forth between the two and really dig in. What's the difference? And um, before we keep going, this is a super basic script that just goes straight into uh, this insert from URL where I manually compile these curl options. I hope never, I hope nobody ever has to manually compile curl options again when we're done with this meetup, um, but it's still gonna be helpful, all the basic concepts here. Um, that we go through here. All right, so next step, um, create a new record. And this really is kind of the key tool that I thought, okay, this makes it, this makes it a meetup topic. Um, that has saved me so many times. So when I place this call now, and um, actually, let me take a step back. I wanna, I have the basic integration going with MailChimp. Now I wanna go ahead and create a campaign in MailChimp. So if I go over to my browser here, 
um, jump over to the appropriate API documentation. So I shouldn't need a whole, whole lot to create a campaign and for the sake of time, I'm gonna fast track this a little bit. So I'm gonna um, save this as a new call, post create campaign, all right. Um, so it says here, my endpoint is campaigns. I can add that in. Um, authorization should still work. This should be a post call. And usually when there's a post, there's some kind of body involved. And I will copy and paste that in because it's not something right now we need to spend time on. They're asking for JSON body and I can paste this in here. We'll see if that works. It looks badly formatted, but um, so if I go through here, they ask for type that's required. There's a list of types that I can use. So I put this in here and then I wanted to have a title in here. So I have settings and then title, even though it's not required. The only thing that's required is really the type of campaign that they're asking for. Um, but I wanted to have this additional title in there. So I'm just gonna send this off and see what happens. And I get a 200, I get a body back. So uh, for all I know, we should have a campaign here. Oh, and logged me out. Why did that log me out? That is unfortunate. One second, please. Don't know what's going on there right now. So um going to keep going. We have a positive response from the API. I wanted to show you that there's a new campaign in MailChimp now, um, but that is secondary. I think um, we're good here. So now this seems like a pretty basic call when I recreate this in FileMaker. Uh, in, in Postman, I just change a few options. So now comes the interesting part. I want to do the same thing in FileMaker. Um, I think that's our... Step four. So I have this set up. I have this change to post. I have my authorization with the bearer now all fixed. I have my JSON here, just the same as I had it in Postman. I'm still tracking my information. So I want to send this off. So I'm going to place my call. But I get a 400 bad request. Something is not right. And I look at my curl options. I'm sending all this kind of good stuff. I'm sending my JSON in here with the API test campaign in the title. Um, for all intents and purposes, this should work. And this um, is where I want to introduce you to webhook.site. And webhook.site is a really useful tool that's kind of like a honeypot for your API calls. You just navigate to that um, URL and it automatically generates a unique URL for you in that moment that you can grab and then send your call to. So now my first stop us again just to clarify that valentine so instead of sending it to mailchimp you're directing your call to this url is that that's correct? exactly yeah that's so when i go over here to postman now i want to see like yes i can go over here and see how they compile the call but i want to see exactly what mailchimp sees when i send this so um just for right now um i'm going to paste in that unique url that i grab from over here, and I'm gonna send all my stuff there. And you'll see here in the background that it registered that call and it passes out all the information for me that I sent. And by the way, just, you know, I sent my authorization bearer and everything here because I'm just gonna disable that in just a few minutes. I would uh, normally strip that out or obfuscate that somehow 
before you sell it to a site like that. But that's just a word of warning. So I see everything there. I see the headers that it sent. I see the body that it sent. I see it was a post that it sent, where it came from, how big it was, just a whole bunch of information. I was like, okay, so this is apparently how a successful call looks. So now I'm going to go over to FileMaker and say, like, but my FileMaker call doesn't work. And I have this prepared here. So this is part of why I like putting my URL into a variable. Because right now I'm just going to disable this and enable this, which sends it to the same webhook, just to see what comes out on the other end. So I'm going to send this. Of course, this one returns a 200 now because I sent it here. So this was my postman call. This is how it looks. And now I click on this one. This is the call I sent from FileMaker. And immediately you notice that there is a pretty big difference right here. Like I'm sending just one curly bracket. That is not what I'm trying to send, right? So without stepping through it, running through the debugger and trying to um, look at all the variables, I can immediately see the difference here. And I know where to look on the FileMaker side of things. So if I dive back into the script here, obviously this is something that I purposefully broke. Um, if you look in here, I think this is potentially a pretty common thing. It's like I had a problem with escaping my curl options. That's what it comes down to. So when I send this, um, it's not sending the right um, content. And when a MailChimp even said when it returns, like, hey, there's an error in the JSON parsing, right? Not every API gives you that information. Some just says like, nah, doesn't doesn't work. So um, I think, honestly, if I just take these two out, uh, I should be good to go. So let's give this a try. I'm going to send it to the same webhook side again. Go over here. There's a new call. I still have some kind of problem there. I'm not sending the proper JSON. I broke it so well that I can't even fix it anymore. Um, and I'm not going to spend time because there's more more um, valuable things here. But I think the point is now like what I would do. Like I would not obviously go in here and try to fix it. Now I would um, set my JSON in a and a set of variables using the FileMaker native uh, JSON functions to build that properly and pass it in as a variable here so that I wouldn't have to worry about it. And I believe if I'm not entirely wrong, the way you would do that um, is that you just uh, pass it in here with an, with, is it like this? Somebody can probably confirm that. I think that's how you pass in the the variables into the into the curl options. But the point really is this tool and this, if we had more time, Jay, I would ask you to show that script, but I want to keep going. Sure. Um, Go ahead. Th this tool here can show you immediately what you're sending and it'll point you in the right direction of where it's broken. And this is, when you have a script that is that small, it might not seem that valuable. That is not often the case. Oftentimes we have scripts that are much more complex that might include involve any, some kind of XML even, or you put together the body from a lot of different uh, pieces of information and you really um, would spend a lot of time troubleshooting. And in fact, um, I was talking to somebody just a little while ago um, where we had that exact issue with escaping. Um, they were trying to just sent data off and I was like, this is such a convoluted script. I don't even know where to start, but let's just send it here and see what it's, what the API receives. And without stepping through the script at all, we could immediately see there was invalid JSON that was sent and we could immediately identify the script steps that um, compiled that. And then they could go ahead and, and address that issue and fix um, the API call. So. I really like that. So um, 
just to recap what you did, that very first post, the one that said at 8.29, 17 p.m., that was the successful post from uh, Postman. Postman. Mm -hmm. and so you kind of get this A, B, or in this case, A, B, exactly. and C comparison very quickly of what was accurate, what did we send with FileMaker as an example. Exactly, exactly. So you can compare it. And this is, again, like even with this tool, I still usually do the development on that this dual track of like I use Postman, I use FileMaker, and I can constantly compare so I don't go down a rabbit hole. Other areas where this has really worked for me was that I had an API that required the content length header, which is like just the length of this of this body here. And I wasn't sending it, but Postman automatically generates that because it's just like all the APIs want it, so I'm sending it. I didn't know that, it was not in the documentation, and that's all that was missing. So when I go back here, in this case, we're sending it. Um, but um, that was something that broke. Another example was that um, I compiled a call actually using Generator, which some of you have used, um, and I pasted the body into FileMake and I sent it off and I would not work either. And um, the issue I ran into there is that there were some in FileMaker invisible new line characters in the body. And FileMaker just shows them as line break and I can't tell if there's an invalid character in there or not. For, to me, it just looks like formatted JSON. So there was literally nothing I could have found. Um, and I found it because I sent it here and this tool showed me, hey, there's an issue with what you're sending and then I could go back and fix it. Um, so it's just a really um, sort of, it's a really fast way of pointing you in the right direction where the issue might be, especially if you have the ability to compare between a successful call from a tool like Postman or something else and then one that you're generating that's not working properly. And Valentin, just to um, uh, repeat this, if you didn't, uh, if you said it earlier, this is a free website, the, the web.site. Yes. And yeah. so is Postman. Yeah, both free tools. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there are other ones out there. This is just the one that I found that I've used uh, repeatedly in the past. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Robert No had had posted that link in there, didn't say anything about it, but um, yeah. that was at 23 minutes after the hour. Yeah. Um, the one thing, uh, in case you missed it, uh, one of your recommendations was if you do send data to webhook.site or another one like that, you might put in a fake bearer authorization or something to obscure your mm -hmm. your sensitive credentials, right? Or yeah. sensitive data, I should say. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, there's <laughs> that that in itself bears a problem. Pardon my um ah, bear bear. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um because that might be part of the problem. Like this is a perfect example where you have a string that starts with numbers. If you don't handle your JSON properly, like sometimes I'm lazy, I have to admit nobody should course and everybody who's attended the JSON webinars knows you shouldn't do that but if you don't say this is a JSON element and you don't call a JSON string I think is what it is then the JSON pass that sees the first character as a number and, and assume stores it as a, a JSON exactly and it would only oh. send 184 so you know if just oh, saying that like okay if you and that's something I've run into, which is why I know so much about it. <laughs> um, so if you take out the, the token, there is a certain degree of risk that you're, that that's a part of your problem and you're not finding it. So if you have like MailChimp, for example, you can, I could immediately go in now and um, trash that token. So I can run my tests and then immediately trash and generate a new one that I keep working with. That's another option. Just sort of be mindful what you're sharing with anonymous public tools, I guess. Right. Um, all right, so we're flying through the time here is what I was afraid of, but um, I can't highlight enough how useful this tool can be when you're banging your head against the wall, you don't know what's happening. Um, but I was talking about all these different um, 
options and everything. So I want to introduce you to, actually, I don't even know what's next exactly as step one, but um, in this file, based on this work, uh, various API implementations that I had done in the past, um, I have come up with a sort of a script structure that I think is really powerful. And um, in preparation, I called it the universal API template. Um, and first off, credit where credit is due. Um, Robert pasted the link to the to generator. It is based on proof based generator file. Let me, I have that up here somewhere. So this is a um, great little tool, which I'm not going to go into detail about at all. Um, but um, they put that together quite some time ago. Uh, it's kind of like the postman for FileMaker. So very helpful um, as well. And part of um, what I'm going to show you here is um, comes from that. So this script, the HTTP script, which believe it or not, essentially um, just replaces this insert from URL and then some is something that comes 100% from that file. It's a great step uh, script. Don't try to do that work yourself. It's out there, out there for the community. Let's use it. It handles so many different scenarios. It's great. Um, so, <clears throat> um, in this template, I have a demo here. I'm, I'm going to try to to do kind of a, a, a live demo of how. Um, you can use these scripts to literally um, integrate with all, like any API. Oh, come on. I just want to rename these because I have to repoint my scripts a little bit. Um, give me one second. And this uses sort of three steps. The HTTP script is all the heavy work, heavy lifting. We don't have to touch it. Let's just keep it where it is. No need to touch it. Um, then for each API, I have a script that's an H HTTP handler that just handles the most basic information. So the URL and the authentication here. So I'm just going to Take that from Postman. Oh, of course I destroyed this. So I'm gonna take my base URL here, get it in here. That's all I need. I'm gonna, for right now, just paste my bearer token in here. And I missed the B. All right, and I have an extra space I don't want. Um, and you see this gets set as JSON, gets sent to that script, and it just follows that very, very simple pattern. It's a header, it's the authorization header, I pass it, pass it in. It's good if you have a more complex authentication, you can send it to a subscript here, but it just puts together this call and calls the HTTP script and then grabs all the responses. But then I have this universal template um, that has sort of pre-populated everything you might possibly want to send. And I'm going to sort of here in a minute walk through the very first call that we made here in, in, in Postman. If you remember, we tried to go for super simple, um, just the URL, nothing else. So we want to have a get call that's right here. The base URL is handled. We have no endpoint that we need to pass in. So I'm going to disable this. Query parameters, if you don't know what those are in Postman, you can enter them here. Um, and those are the things that get appended to the URL up here. We could pass those in in our script, but we don't have any. So I'm going to disable that too. Um, if you have headers that the API is asking for, you can set this here. So if you have multiples, 
you have one script step per header because these are all headers and then the header name, content type, content length, whatever else the API is calling for, you just create a new line, a new line, change that name, change that value, and you're off to the races. In our case, um, I'm not sure if I can just send none. Let me let me find out um, because I don't think we need any headers. And that's it. We don't need to send the body. I'm just going to keep that blank. Let's set up here as empty JSON doesn't matter. So this is the most basic call. And if I'm not entirely wrong, right now, I have implemented um, two um, MailChimp. So let me find out if that actually worked. And I'm going to run this test and see. Uh, something didn't work. I think um, you need to maybe repoint line 33 there. Yes, thank you. Um, I want this to live demo. Okay, endpoint to that HTTP handler. And there we go. We have a successful implementation. And now it gets really cool because now you can forget about the handler, forget about this. All you get to do is create new endpoints. So I'm gonna keep going and I wanna say like, now I wanna do the same that I did earlier and I wanna actually hit the campaigns endpoint. All I have to do is add my endpoint in here I'm going to keep it as a get for right now because I just happen to know that that lists all the campaigns I have in the tool. So let me rename this get campaigns. So I sent this off and here another successful call. I didn't need to bother about all the details anymore. This is the JSON of all the campaigns that I have on MailChimp. So now, actually, let me grab this. And now I want to create a campaign. So post campaign, probably at this point, I just get in here. So this needs to be changed to post. And I'm just fast tracking this. Obviously, this is all coming from the documentation. And at this point, I know I need to send some data. Um, and um, so we could. Uh, JSON set element. I want to add this to my data variable, right? And I just happen to remember that I needed a type and that type needed to be regular. And this is where I get lazy. Right now I do the same thing because it's only text, but this is what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, what not to do, right? Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going for fast right now. So this writes my data, which then essentially is the body that gets picked up down here, passed into my request and then passed to all the downstream scripts. So for right now, I believe, I'm just gonna send this off, see what happens. And yes, I get another successful call. Um, I just created a campaign. So now you see how fast this gets when you break this stuff out. And this is why I said, I hope nobody ever touches the curl options again because this script handles it. I don't wanna do that anymore. I don't want to know how to do it. All I care about is I wanna send them some data to create a campaign. I wanna create these endpoints. And I'm, you know, just wanna point out in the, I think that was the last eight minutes of this webinar, using these template scripts, you can just keep going. So I really urge you look at these, Files, know about the curl trace, know about the response headers, work with them, especially what use the webhook.site. This is going to be super valuable still. But if you keep going, these are modular scripts that you can copy and paste anywhere. They don't really integrate with any schema. And I didn't show you now um, the, the error handler script that you can dive into as well. Um, but it's a simple pattern of literally like three scripts. I have an endpoint script, a central handler, passes it off to an HTTP script and 
my hat is off to to the people who put this together because it's it's just so great and we can use it and we can go ahead and integrate it. So, and I think with 10 minutes left um, in this meetup, this is kind of where I'm gonna call it and um, kind of see, summarize really, I want to stress again, start with Postman. Don't get hung up in FileMaker too early. You have too many variables. It's super difficult. Start with the most basic call as I just did that there, like the most basic get call so that you don't get hung up on you're trying to fix the authentication and the body at the same time. That's not a good situation. Use the curl options, the dash D and dash trace, send them to variables so you have more information. Comparing FileMaker to Postman is super valuable. Webhook.site is another tool that really gives you a lot of information. And then use these template scripts <laughs> because I really do think to some degree it is a universal API template that this is a demo file. I think I shared one with um, Jay that I stripped out all the credentials so we can post that here. If you didn't find them, uh, find it, Jay, I can reshare. Um, and I am working on a blog Very post cool. for, um, about this as well with a few pointers where I think we're going to share this file with the larger community. So that's the meetup for today. This is um, how you troubleshoot APIs and how you hopefully avoid troubleshooting APIs, which I think is the much better way to go about it. So there you go. That was great, Valentin. And um, just to recap a little bit here, um, if a particular section went by too quickly for you, um, we will be posting a recording of this video to YouTube and we'll announce that when it's done. But in the meantime, uh, if you have some questions here, we've got yeah. five, less than 10 minutes. Uh, we could take some questions to, to dive in deeper to some of what folks have out there. Robert. You're raising your hand, it looks like. Did I, yes, well, I, I just wanted to point out uh, that the, the link I posted in the chat is not to Generator. It's actually to a different repo where they keep yep. um, the up-to-date version of the HTTP um, request script. And I mean, they, they don't do a, a ton of updates, uh, but for the updates that they do, I, I, I think um, they're, they're valuable. So it's, it's uh, a good repo nice. to keep an eye on. Yeah, I forget what version number they're up to, but uh, and and when the the most recent uh, change they did. But uh, yeah, all in all, just uh, that's 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 good. I'll check that out because I'm pretty sure I don't have the latest because I know there are a few things I keep running into and I'm sort of fixing in there and it's missing a few options um, such as authenticating with a certificate, for example, which is a topic in and of itself. But that's not currently handled in there. I'll chime in for whatever it's worth. Um, and say that as someone who never does um, or never did API stuff ever before, I had to take a brief foray into um, a site once to explore what was possible. And I, I started with Postman and they had a whole library of the commands and endpoints that I was able to download and install in, yep. in Postman so I could start to plug in my, my API key that I got as a sandbox. Long story short, it, it was so easy to use. Um, I was able to test each piece and even found a bug in their own library because my confidence level was so high. Like I was like, I'm sure this should work. It's not working. And I found like there was just a simple typo, but that sort of breaking it down into little bite-sized pieces that Postman and that library let me do was just a huge confidence builder for me to be able to eventually then turn around and put that into FileMaker. Yeah, so, and I really think that is like, if you do that, if you have it in Postman, you can literally take the screen, take one of these uh, template scripts and one-to-one -one translate the pieces of information into here and then don't worry about the FileMaker details because these scripts handle them for you. So um, that should really bridge that gap. So Valentin, I had, I was obviously at the, I hope it's obvious, at your last presentation where you did the mm -hmm. API introduction. The yeah. huge takeaway that I got from that was use Postman, don't use FileMaker. And, um, we're actually troubleshooting an API call right now um, at Skeleton Key with one of our clients. Um, we have a, we 
we a, a, a little backstory is they had a development version of the API, and then there's a switch over to production. Everything we worked all the kinks out through uh, the development version, and we thought it's just a switch over to the public API. Let's do that to the public API endpoint. And when we did that, um, there were there were and are various requirements that were not available. And even the even the methods of um, whether you get to do a get or a post, you could do a get in the demo version. So we were going to do a get when it came over to the production version. And there we were starting to get errors of um, you have to do a post, like the method that you're trying, the get is not available. So it was really helpful to talk to the client and we're, we're still actively in the troubleshooting phase. But um, he and I, uh, my contact with the client, understands now that our troubleshooting is only within Postman. If we can't get it right in Postman, we are not going to get it right in FileMaker. And right now we're actually um, showing the, the vendor that has the API uh, that we're making incremental, every little piece that they're adjusting to try to get to, to solve this bug um, is being uh, demoed and tested in Postman. So no, no further coding is happening. Um, just want to give you a lot of kudos for uh, emphasizing that punch of Postman first. Right, we have a, I'm, I'm going to throw in a bonus. Um, unless there's any question, then I'm going to shut up or comment. Don't have enough time, but it, it deserves an, an honorable um, mention um, is this one here. And I'm going to paste the link. Um, Mocky. Because um, the next step is really you want to handle errors, um, but sometimes you cannot force an API to return errors to you. This is what this one can. You can literally build your own endpoint and then, you know, I'll do this. And then I can say like, hey, when I call you, then please um, return 418, I'm a teapot. You know, like that's a weird return, but I can set this up um, to, um, too many requests to really mimic responses from an API that sometimes are hard to get. And then I can sort of make sure my error handling works correctly and test certain processes. So it works the same way. Like I create this thing um, and then I generate it and it gives me a URL here that I can then use just like I use webhook.site to test it. And when I call this thing, I'm just going to go over here, paste it in here. I get a response here that's now 429, too many requests. And I can even return headers and I think even a body. So you can really, for development and testing purposes, put together your own tool set. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But that's I think that's a, Thanks for giving a, us that link. Pretty cool tool as well. That's all I had to say for tonight. Beverly, was, there were a lot of that was thumbs very up. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna. Oh, cool. I was gonna ask you to chime in here and on your thoughts to expand on those uh, reactions that you were throwing up there. I had used Postman with uh, XML call, like I said, I had done APIs and when you use some of the web apps that I had used, they you know all that was all built in. So I didn't really have to get in there and mess with anything other than you know use the built-in function. Mm -hmm. And so I just have not had a need until now to API call. And I was really, really shy about trying it. I said, oh, no, I can get into serious trouble. But this was really good. It's broken it down. I like Great. that. And on that note, be respectful of time. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next month, hopefully. Thanks. Bye-bye.